God actually puts inside of us the ability to see things sometimes that other people don't see. Why do we see things that others don't see? We see them because that is what we are called to, to be a solution to. Some, for example, I may see something and you may not see it. But the thing that you see, that's what you're called to, to be a solution here on the earth. Every single one of us are called and born for a reason to be a solution. Uh, every great business that we, that we see in the earth, if it's Google, it might be Amazon, it might be Facebook, it might be whatever it is. Facebook was brought about to be a solution for people to be connected to one another. Amazon was brought about so it, so it could be the large, largest marketplace virtually. And that's what it is today. It was brought about to be a solution. But the question that the Holy Spirit is asking every single one of us during these 21 days, what is it that I've called you to solve? What problem is it that I've called you to solve? What is it that's on the inside of us that is, that is, that is like a burden? What is the burden that we're carrying to solve? What is it? Which field is it that it is? Is, is it the marketplace? It could be the business place. It could be in the church. It could be with family. It could be, you, you might have a burden to see broken marriages restored. And God in this season is challenging you to step out in great faith to see that restored. So every great man of God, every person that we see in the scriptures was actually designed and they were commissioned to bring about a solution. They did something bigger than themselves. If it was Noah, bigger than himself. If it was Moses, bigger than himself. If it was Joseph, bigger than himself. They did something that actually brought about kingdom legacy. I want somebody to type that in the chat. Kingdom legacy. That's what this thing is about. It's about kingdom legacy. Something that is bigger than yourself. That is the question that God is asking every single one of us. Although there is a solution and there's something for you to do, God, God, God will bless it, but it must be bigger than yourself. It can't be about us. It can't be I. And the first I that we hear in the scriptures is where Satan mentioned that I will be like. And that's a selfish, proud spirit. God will bless the business. God will bless the venture. God will bless what, what he desires for us to do. But it can't only be about ourselves. Because God is the God of legacy. He's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's not, he wasn't just the God of Abraham. That's good. He wasn't just the God of Abraham. He was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was about legacy. It was about continuation. It was about building something bigger than themselves. And then Jacob then became the father of many nations. And as we know, there is, there, there is then the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes, because God wants to build and bless us more than we've ever imagined in, in this season. He's the God of the generations. I was reading this week, Psalms 23. We all know it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides the waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, etc. And it goes on to say um, that he anoints our head with oil. But then it goes on to say, our cup overflows. He anoints our head with oil, not so that the oil can just stay on our head, but that, so that it can overflow. Listen, there's something that God wants to do in each and every single one of us that doesn't just stay with us. The anointing that God has placed on every single person on this Zoom isn't just to stay with us. It's to be a blessing to our environment. It's to be a blessing to our families. The anointing that God has placed on every single one of us, the ability the creativity, uh, the charisma, every whatever it is that God's placed on the inside of us, it's to anoint our head with oil, but not to stop there, so it overflows. There must be an overflow. There, it must be bigger than ourselves. And something that God has uh, challenged me with greatly, uh, he spoke this to me. He said, he said, son, he said, what is it that you want to build? And I said, God, I said, well, there's a lot, there's a lot that I want to do in my life. There's a lot that I want to achieve in my life. He said, okay, he said, he said, but there's two types of building that you can build. There's two ways you can build. He said, do you want to build a church or do you want to build a cathedral? I said, Lord, what do you mean? I said, I said, well, we are the church. He said, he said, no, he said, he said do, do you want to build a church? Or do you want to build a cathedral? It didn't make no sense to me at the time. And I began to do some studying and some research. A church, as a builder, as a, as a, as a man, okay, or as a woman, or as a builder, it's very possible to build a, a church building, a 5,000-seat auditorium, 
within 12 months very easily. Very easy to do that. But it's, and, and, and you can see tangibly the results of what it is that you've built. But on average, a cathedral takes between 250 to 300 years to build. On average, 250 to 300 years to build. What does that mean? That means that the people who initially started the building phase built it with such a faith, knowing that they may never see it complete. Can you imagine that? They built something that they, they sowed into ground. They, they, they began to build and dig a foundation. I don't know if you guys are hearing me. They, 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 there was something in them that desire to build something that they would not even yet see the manifestation of. Because the challenge that we have in our generation, and I feel the spirit of God, is that we've become so self-obsessed. We've become so self-motivated. Uh, it's all been about us. This millennial spirit that says, God, well, I, I want the blessing so I can be okay. And God, I want the blessing so I can do what I, it's, it can't be about us. What God is doing in this season, he, he, he's not going to bless only us. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's about legacy. And I believe so strongly when we dedicate what, what the ambition and the desire, the goals and the dreams unto God, when we, when we desire and posture in our hearts that like God, this is not only about us, but this is to bless the nations. This is to bless my family. This is to bless the city. This is to bless uh, uh, people that I am yet to even come into contact with. And this is confirmation. God bless you. God, I want to do something that is bigger than myself, that my eyes may not even behold. But by faith, I'm going to sow it. Myself and my wife, we're laying our life down. We may not even see the full manifestation, what God has for us, but our children may see it. And that, that's okay. Their children may see it. And that's okay. But I'm sowing it in faith, believing in God, holding on to God. I'm sowing and I may not even see the full fruit of it. But will I sow it anyway? Will I count the cost and sow it anyway? Can it be that there may not even be a tangible, uh, uh, a tangible uh, building for me or, or whatever it is for me to hold on to or for me to attain? But I'm going to trust God anyway. And that's the question. Do we want to build a church or do we want to build a cathedral? Do we want to build something that we can attain, which is nothing wrong with doing? But what God blesses has a mindset for more than yeah. every single person who God has done something spectacular through every person who God has carried his weight and his glory. And that's what I believe we desire in the season to carry anybody who wants to carry his weight and carry his glory and carry his anointing that comes through having a mind and a heart that says, God, I, I, I know this would be great for me, but, but I, I'm, I'm laying it down and I'm saying in this season, God do it for more than me. Anoint my head with oil so my cup overflows. So I become a, 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 an impact to the world around me. So it doesn't just end with me. He's the God of generations. He's the God of legacy. He, he's, he's the God of, of, of more than. 